Hey, what's up, guys? Turkey here, back again with another episode of my Seattle Sonics My League. Right here on NBA 2K19. In today's episode, we finish up this current season that we find ourselves in, the 2024-2025 season. But before we continue onward, I have a couple of things we need to uh, we need to talk about. A couple of changes to make based off of your uh, much more informed suggestions. First and foremost, I have absolutely learned you have made it quite clear above all else is potential. So I will keep that in mind. I don't know why I went to this page, but I figured when talking about potential, we might as well look at prospects. But above all else, focus on potential. So in terms of untapped potential, that'll certainly be the way that we go. We're also going to be a bit more hands-on with injuries. I forgot to turn the injury, basically the notification back on after, you know, we finally built up our team. Because, of course, early on, I didn't care about who got injured. We knew we were going to suck. So there wasn't too much to worry about there. What else was I going to check? There was, there was a decent amount, I have to admit. We were going to be looking at sending down players. I'm thinking... It's, it's got to be Kato or McKinney. At the very least, Kato is going to go down to the G League. And actually, I can assign both he and McKinney down to the G League. We're going to do that for the rest of the season to shorten up the bench to make sure that they can get some playing time. We are going to drop the bench down to a 9 or 10 man bench, really depending on who's healthy at the time. As again, suggested by you guys with your much more informed opinions than mine. However... Before we do that, I do want to take a look as well at who our most efficient players are to decide who we're going to be running the offense through. So taking a look at Mr. Bohannon here, player efficiency rating of 18, the efficiency in general is an 18.7, true shooting percentage is at a 5.73. Right. Right. Not bad. Can I directly compare players? Because I don't think... I'm allowed. I'm not allowed to see advanced stats from this menu, am I? Yeah, because all the oh, tenancy, badge view, player list. Not what I wanted. I really don't like the look of that. Simple view. Yeah, I don't think I'm allowed to see it from uh, the outward menu here. It has to be having clicked on the player, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. We pretty much know it's only going to be one of the higher rated players anyway. So Bohannon right now will say he's at an 18, 19, and a 5, 7, 3. As opposed to Dorikas, who, Jesus Christ. Right. My God, he's as bigger of a beast, as much of a beast, bigger, a larger beast than we really ever could have imagined. I mean, again, we'll say that Bohannon... You know, I'm actually going to mark this stuff down really quick. Because I want to do this, you know, live as well so you guys can get a look at these stats. Uh, we'll definitely say that Dorikas right now is going to be ahead of Bohannon in terms of his ridiculous efficiency rating and the uh, true shooting percentage. Arnold, though, should have the highest of the bunch, right? He does not. Shockingly. But he is a better option than Bohannon at a 20.8... And the true shooting percentage of a 5.73. Interesting. Man, Dorikas, I guess, will be the guy that we're going to be running this offense through. Dario. Yeah, Dario is going to get dropped. Not too bad, but of course we have some other better options. And of course Cameron Black is never going to be an offensive force. Yeah, not a chance. He is a defensive specialist. So we have our top three. Dorikas is actually going to be the guy that we look to run the offense through for the remainder of this season. Uh, I will be fixing that manual. Oh, fuck's sake. Whatever. Just auto-fix it. Thank you. And let's go ahead. Uh, bench depth. I'm going to drop the 10 for the moment. Might drop it to 9. And as far as the star players are concerned, it is going to be Dorikas, Arnold, and Bohannon as the top three that we look to run through. So again, I'm, I'm tempted to change up the settings. There wasn't too much of a conversation in the uh, comment section of the last episode in terms of whether or not we change up our play style. Of course, the current uh, system and everything like that. So I think we'll leave it as is. It's funny, though, Dorikas is the least suited player towards this system, but still, he's just such a good player that he makes it work for him. So it's pretty nice. So as far as the bench is concerned right now, I'm going to drop it to 9. Probably keep it on 10, though, once Cameron Black is good to go, which he should be soon. 
So we'll go ahead and drop that. And as far as the minutes that we're looking for, if I do that, uh, Arnold on 36. I'm going to drop the utilization, say down to 45. I'm thinking that's good. So Dreykus is on 36, Arnold's on 36, Bohannon on 34, McDaniel's at 25. That's not too bad. So Hopkins is going to play quite a bit. Marsh on 20 minutes, Sparks on 15, and then Wesley on 10. That's not too bad. I might bump up the time a little bit more, perhaps. And again, I'm probably going to bump that up to 10 people just to make sure we're good to go. Technically, I could drop Sparks out of the equation. We'll We'll see. We'll see, but Sparks or Wesley really are the two obvious ones that could get dropped. But that'll be the lineup as we uh, begin here today. So really, again, the two big moves, sending down a couple of players to the G League. It'll be pretty beneficial for them, I would hope. And we'll see how this team does. Right now, we do have 20 wins. It's our most successful season yet, which really isn't all that much of a surprise as Cameron Black is fully healed. So we'll leave rotation as is and actually back out. So that's crazy. It was actually back to 100% before we even simmed a day. So I guess the big question here is if I set up the rotation with Cameron Black back, it takes Wesley completely out of the lineup, which I don't necessarily want. I mean, I get it. Obviously, having the star players play more frequently is the best way to go. But I do kind of want all these guys to have at least a little bit of a shot. Let me see what that adjusts to. So you still have Arnold on 36, Dorikas on 35, Dario at 30, Bohannon at 33. That's still not too bad. Get Sparks 10 minutes a game, Wesley 6, Marsh at 15. I could still drop bench utilization, though, a little bit more. That really didn't change anything, i got to be honest. Uh, let's drop it down. There's a little bit more. Just, you know, experimenting around. Still, that didn't really change anything. Alright, so it's it's pretty much set in stone. If I drop it down to 20? Okay, so that saw a change. Okay, I think that works. So Wesley's on like 5 minutes, Sparks on 9. So they're not going to get much time to shine, but they'll still be able to play at least a little bit. And we do still have our star players. Arnold getting 37 minutes tonight, Bohannon on 34, and 35 for Dorikas. People were saying try to aim for like 36, so we'll see how that works. We should be okay, I'd like to think. Hopefully we can stay healthy, though, <laughs> moving forward. Start off with a uh, win, thankfully. I was going to say against the Nuggets, probably a loss. We end up winning that game, which is extremely helpful. We sneak away, we steal even. A one point victory over the Heat before dropping a game to the Pacers. Let's uh, let's see what else we're dealing with here, shall we? Minnesota, that is a win. Byron Wesley though goes down to injury. That sucks, but it's not the worst case scenario. I'm gonna make sure that he sits. So bench depth back down to nine. Bump that up. So our star players are all on 36. At least our top three. Sparks up to nine minutes. Okay, we're looking a little bit better. And then Hopkins is a sixth man. He's, he's playing really well lately. Let's see him about a week ahead, see what we're dealing with. I don't really care about the uh, all-star captains at the moment or the team selection process. So we end up playing Atlanta and St. Louis. It's a win over Atlanta. Can we beat the sound as well? So we move past deadline day. Look at that. Well, these changes, so far so good. You also factor in our team being healthy. Very beneficial right now as oh, Dario is going to be out for a week or two. That's brutal. We did pick up the win over the Rockets, though. We are battling back here as, let's see, yeah, Wesley still hurt. So I'm actually going to drop that down to eight people. and I'm going to bump up the bench utilization and take a look at what we're dealing with. So 36 minutes for Arnold Bohannon and Dorikas. Marsh is going to get quite the opportunity here <clears throat> at the starting power forward spot with Black there as well. I think I feel all right about that. I mean, pretty much every starter is going to be playing almost the maximum amount of time as you'd want. I guess technically I could uh, bump up bench utilization a little bit more just because we're going to be running with a shorter bench. That works for me. Tariq is down to 35. Let's see what we can do here as we end up playing the Seals the very next day. Can we get a win? Yes, we can. Hell of a start. I don't know if it's a matter of luck, the fact that we're relatively healthy, I'm going to credit a lot of it to you guys. We are absolutely on fire right now. Up to 29 and 32, battling our way back to 500 as we approach the All-Star game, which is tremendous. 
Absolutely tremendous. I'm going to guess by that little icon in the top right-hand corner that we had somebody in the Young Stars and somebody else there. Yeah, Bohannon. Bohannon was in the Young Stars game representing, I would imagine, Team USA. Indeed it was. And for the world, the wow, Bohannon against Dorikas. Not too bad. Not too bad. And then All-Star wise, to take a look here, we had to have had somebody, I would, I would suspect, right? Maybe? Let me know if I missed anybody. I don't think I did. I don't think we had anybody there, but why would that icon have been there otherwise? Who did we have? Who am I missing? I could have sworn we had somebody there, or it's just showing it was play. I don't know. It's fine. It's all good. Let's sim through the remainder of February. We have one game left here against San Antonio. Dario Galab will be back, which is very, very nice for us. As we'll bump up the bench depth and drop the bench utilization. Let's take a look at the minutes. Uh, you know, technically, I'm going to bump up the bench utilization just a little bit more. Try to get those to 36. I know I can change them myself. I don't really care. Uh, eh. Oh, shit. Wesley's actually back from injury, and it never told me. Maybe because it wasn't a major injury. Let's uh, bump that up and then drop that back down. And nothing, okay, so 36, 30, 27, and 25. So Hopkins is going to get quite a bit of playing time. And again, not much for Sparks and Wesley, but I'm still feeling pretty good about that. Our starters are still getting basically all the time they'd want. It's actually Dario who suffers a little bit more, but Hopkins has been phenomenal. As we win again, one loss. It may be a short month, but one loss through the month of February. Uh, yes, I would like to stop contract extensions, huh? Something, again, we're just starting to have to worry about, aren't we? It should be under front office, right? Yeah, it is. I looked right at it. So, Jesse McDaniels wants to test free agency, which sucks. But I think, yeah, he's the only guy we have to worry about. So, yeah, there's nothing we can do. We'll worry about that later. Let's see what we can do here. First three games of the month against Detroit, Golden State, and Houston. Again, we end up losing our first game in a while. Pistons take it by six. Golden State, we get crushed, and we lose to Houston as well. And just like that, the bloom's off the rose a little bit. We've lost a decent bit of momentum. I'm going to just change that up really quick. It actually drops Bohannon's minutes. Not sure how I feel about that. Let's. Uh, we were down to like 20 for bench utilization. Let me double check that. You know, I'm good with that, with Arnold getting a little bit more playing time. Drop the bench utilization just a little bit. Let's see what else we can do. By the way, team chemistry. Let's see what else we can do there. And I think I said doo doo, but that's okay. We're up to 78 team chemistry. We are finally putting it together. I want to check the standings here with us being a month or so out from the end of the season. We're not that far out. We're three and a half games behind Denver. They have games at hand, or a game at hand, and then Houston has a massive advantage. But technically, we're going to be pushing for a playoff spot if we can get back to our winning ways. And we do, beating the Clippers by eight. Huge game against Connecticut slash Hartford. They get the win there. That might have been our easiest game, at least in terms of them being a fellow expansion team. So we are two and two in our last four games. A big four-game stretch here. Actually, I just realized that NBA icon in the corner doesn't mean much. We end up losing to Philadelphia. We end up losing to Utah. It was a really good push down the stretch, but too little too late. How many games do we have left this season? That's it, huh? I think we're going to be just on the outside looking in, but next year, if we can stay healthy, we should be golden as we are, yeah, currently uh, three and a half games out, but Minnesota has five games left. So too little too late, unfortunately. But you factor in team chemistry rebounding. If we can keep this team together and, of course, look to bring in some half-decent options, I mean, the depth should get better. You factor in who went down to the G League. You factor in that we're going to have a lottery pick. Maybe we get lucky. I highly doubt it. But the team's going to be looking much better. And overall, I'm really happy with this team. I mean, we went from being like, oh, my God, 19 wins, yeah, to kind of being worried at the end of last episode we have 35 wins. I can't imagine we're going to lose the rest of our games, although knowing that knowing this game, now that I just said that, it's absolutely going to happen, or not, to end up beating Oklahoma City. I mean, hopefully we can win four games here and hit 40 wins. That would be phenomenal. 
absolutely phenomenal if we could finish with a 500 record. The amount of progress that would show would be absolutely outstanding. As we have won three straight games, can we win two out of three? Two of the games against the Vegas Aces. If we do win two out of three, we will finish with 40 wins on the year. We need one win in our last two games against the Pelicans or Aces. Let's see where we are. Of course, playoff-wise, we know we're pretty much not going to make it, but that is okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> we weren't that far off, though. We really weren't that far off. Minnesota, I mean, technically, if the T-Wolves lose their last two games and we win our final two, something crazy could happen. But we were that close. If we just could have stayed healthy and avoided a little bit of problem, you know, a little bit of trouble, and some mismanagement on my part for sure, if we could have avoided those issues, we may have been able to make it. But, I mean, look at the signs here, though. Everyone, you know, no one's in negative morale. We're looking good. We're looking really good. I'm actually surprised. Wow, Hopkins is getting more time than Dario. I think it's because of the whole... Someone was mentioning, actually, that I forgot to set up a backup power forward. That is not... That's not correct. I forget what it was then. That's weird. It's definitely because of the amount of playing time Hopkins is scheduled to get. Um, and there's really... I mean, there's, there's some things I could do to change that up. Uh, let's see. So Wesley's on seven minutes. Uh, I'm going to drop him down to five. Sparks down to seven. And let's bump up uh, Dario from there. Drop Marsh by two. McDaniels by two. Hopkins by two. Because I want a little bit more playing time for those two down the stretch. And we'll see what happens here. It would take a miracle for us to make the playoffs. And the Pelicans will probably break our hearts. They did not. Did Minnesota win? If not, this is going to come down to the last day of the season. Did the T-Wolves win? They did. All right, so Minnesota is officially confirmed. We are just going to miss out on the playoffs for the first time. But what a positive season. Team chemistry up to 84. You guys said to view this as kind of our first rebuilding season. Or in terms of like, okay, this season rebuild the team chemistry, and next year you're really going to go for it. You weren't wrong. I mean, Darrell Arnold's up to an 88, which is tremendous. We need to find somebody else, though. Point guard, shooting guard, to help take the pressure off of Arnold and Bohannon. Kato obviously wasn't it, and I doubt he ever will be. So hopefully we can have a little bit of lottery luck here today. Uh, you factor in Cameron Black, the injury concerns were a little bit a little bit worrisome. Hopefully we can get Jesse McDaniels to stay with him being more of an offensive threat. Hopefully as well we can continue to see someone like Sean McKinney improve. But what we've seen this season, especially out of the likes of uh, Left Aristarikas, who is an absolute monster, I'm really excited for this team. It's nice to have seen this team finally turn the corner. We know we're not going to make the playoffs. Can we win? We did win out. To, oh, man, we won out. If Minnesota just screwed up. Giannis ends up winning MVP. Although, I mean, you really could have argued Steph Curry or Trey Young. Now Fletcher. Man, imagine if we ended up with Nelson Fletcher back in the day. Wow, Darrell Arnold finished in sixth. Beautiful. Average almost 24 points a game. Seven assists. Not bad. Darrell Arnold, ladies and gentlemen. He has arrived. Bohannon was 16th. Jesus. Not too bad. Rookie of the year, Lefteris Derikas, which is not surprising given that he's an overager. He deserved it, though, by far. Lefteris, granted, there was a 28-year-old rookie there in Marcel Sirvin, but Lefteris Derikas, rookie of the year. You'll love to see it. Sixth man of the year, Timmy Bonner. Uh, I gotta be honest, I feel like Murray Hopkins got robbed a little bit. Defensive Player of the Year, Giannis wins that as well. Most Improved, Reynardo Delgado of the Blazers. Coach of the Year, Rick Carlisle. There you go. Not too bad, though. Left Harris Derikas, Rookie of the Year. All-NBA First Team, we did not have anybody there, unfortunately. We actually didn't have anybody Second Team either, which is shocking given where we had players in terms of MVP voting. We didn't have anybody in the top three teams, huh? That's shocking. What about All-Defensive? Nobody there. Nobody there. All rookie team, though. Derikas and A.J. Marsh made it as well. Not bad. Not bad at all. A little bit, uh, little bit surprising. A little bit disappointing. 
but overall, not too bad. Now, the good thing is, with us not taking the 8th seed, we will avoid getting absolutely stomped, or at least you would think, by the Dallas Mavericks. So, you know, there's always a bright side. As far as the season stats, let's take a look at what this team was able to do this year. Darrell Arnold, again, averaging almost 24 points. Bohannon over 20. Darikas only 15, so in terms of running the offense through him, maybe not. But, I mean, you know, if we take a look here... Player efficiency rating of 21.1. True shooting was just under a .6. I mean, it, it might have still been the right idea, but again, there is the argument of Dorikas not exactly being, we'll call it a scheme fit, a systems fit for right now. But overall, pretty damn good season. I'm really happy with that. Although Edmund Sparks, I know he's defense first, but Jesus, he's really defense first. <laughs> he just cannot put up any points. Very happy with the progression that we had seen this season. Let's see how the playoffs go. And hopefully, 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 there is a little bit of lotto luck coming up. Because if we get a half-decent pick here, the team depth is pretty much going to be sorted. We know what the pressure's on. Is Minnesota whew, took them to seven but couldn't win it. We do know, of course, another point guard, another shooting guard. It's, it's needed. Sparks isn't an amazing player. Kato, it just didn't really work out. We know we need help in that aspect. As Dallas is going to the conference final to take on Golden State, it's Miami and Orlando in the Eastern Conference Final. We'll see how this pans out. I do not believe Dallas nor Miami have made it to a final. The Mavericks have, as has Miami. The All-Florida Eastern Conference Final, Miami makes it out of it. And they battle back from 2-0 down. Dallas wins Game 7, and they do indeed win Game 7. The Mavericks will win it all. Mitch Adkins. Mitch Adkins, MVP of the Finals. There you go. So let's take a look here. God, that lineup is amazing. Team chemistry at 92 is, again, we finished 41-41. and 41. Very happy with what we accomplished this year. Chris Paul calls it a day at 40 years old. He got Dalla as well. Derrick Rose, Eric Bledsoe, Gordon Hayward, Lance Stevenson, Ricky Rubio, and company. Shout out to Jay Crowder. Let's see what we have here in terms of any Hall of Fame inductees. I feel like we might have at least one or two. And we did. I didn't even notice that LeBron retired. <laughs> Just because he wasn't up there in age, he retired a little bit early. Chris Paul also retired. Jesus Christ. LeBron James, ladies and gentlemen. LeBron James. Jersey retirements. <laughs> Chris Paul has his number retired by the Clippers. LeBron has his number retired by Miami, Cleveland, and the LA Lakers. Tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. League meetings. Nothing was approved, and I'm not really worried about it, so that's fine. League realignment. Again, nothing is going to happen. So the big question now is what are we looking at when it comes to the draft lottery? Can we get lucky? We do not have the greatest odds. 0.5% chance. But moving up here would be absolutely tremendous. So let's hope for the best. The Sixers do not move up. We're going to stick with this until we see us in the 18th spot because we know what's going to happen. Washington has not moved up. So here we go. Moment of truth for us. Moment of truth. Can we move up? Please. No, we cannot. So there you go. We will have the 18th pick. New Orleans, LA, and Portland are up there. So there you go. No luck for us. But I'm still feeling all right. Staff signing-wise, we are still pretty much good to go. Having an assistant GM would be a little bit better, though, or at least a better one. Mike D'Antoni still has our head coach, which I'm very happy about. I'm still happy with having Dirk as our assistant. He still has one year left. So, and then training there is good. Got to be honest, in terms of assistant coaches, what are we dealing with here? So, Owen Masters would be a great addition, or Eli Best. Anthony Adams, Pau Gasol wants to be an assistant coach. And then here, Aaron Phillips would be an amazing GM. But I don't think that's going to happen. Is it? Is it? I mean, then again, you can't be an outright GM. Aaron, you know what? We're going to we're gonna fire this guy. 
And uh, yeah, Aaron, buddy, yeah, you're not, you're not gonna wanna. It's gonna take all the money in the world to try and get you to sign, isn't it? Oh God, people are saying how it could go quicker, but it's not working for me. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, so, best assistant GM wise, it's probably Eli Best. Yeah, it evens out. Let's go for Owen Masters here. And hopefully this will not take too long. It still takes a while to scroll, though. <laughs> but what are you going to do? Oh, well, I know I don't have to completely fill up the interest meter. Might as well, just to make sure. Or at least get close enough. There we go. Hopefully that goes through to the combine. And hopefully we're set as far as staff signing. Please. Please. Yeah, there we go. Got him from the Celtics. Not bad. Not too shabby. The combine I'm not worried about. Pre-draft workouts I am worried about. Let's see what we're dealing with. So we know players towards the top of the board are not going to be all that useful to us. I do want to make sure, though, that we have players right around here. Pretty much 100% scouted. Even if, well, you know, I mean, in fairness... We need the help up top. It has to be. Has to be that way no matter what. So point guards, let's uh, let's take a look here. So good thing is we have a couple of guys. I mean, like someone like Bill Bell or Jaden Valentine are fairly likely. I'm gonna take a bigger look or uh, another look here at uh, well, in fairness, one of those two should be there. We'll take a look at Mitch Patrick and Malcolm Daniels to play it safe. Shooting guard wise, let's make sure we take a look at Richie Davidson, Gustavo Pena. And from there, it's going to be a little bit tough because, of course, there are a lot of people there, right? There are a lot of people. So what, we have like, what, 30, what, we have like, what, 37-ish teams? So I would assume our next pick, it's going to be around like, you know, 55-ish. So again, I probably want to take a look at uh, players up top just because we don't know for sure about Sparks. We don't know for sure about Cato, and in fairness, McDaniels could leave, but we do have McKinney. So we'll take a look at anybody who could help up top, or maybe someone who could transition to a small forward position. Wentley Tam. Wentley Tam, we'll take a better look at you. Tyron Bernard. Brad Strawberry. Brad Strawberry. We'll take a look at him as well. Ronnie Jensen. Uh, let's take a look. Chucky Marshall. Harry Seymour. Interior defender for Richie Matthews. We'll take a look at him as well, I think. He's going to be the last one. Or it's going to be Ross Morrison. Tenacious rebounder. That doesn't help too much. Permitted defender. Interior defender. Uh, let's go... Let's go for Richie Matthews, I think. And those will be the guys that we take a look at here. And we'll hope for the best. So draft-wise, i got to be honest. I mean, I think I'm just going to go through the draft here, really. I want to leave it up to you guys, but it's going to be tough to say who's still on the board at this point, right? It's not as easy as being like, okay, here's the top three. Vote between them. So let's, uh, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Pelicans are up first. They take Clifford Meeks, the point guard. No real surprise. Sim to our first pick here. The latest pick we have ever had. Let's see what we have here. Danny Bolden. We know he's a B minus, huh? Damn. We know he's a B minus. We know that Rudy Warner's a 73. So how good is that? How good of a grade is a 73? Uh, no real way to tell there. No real. Well, it's a uh, only offense to C plus. Hmm. Let me take a look at who's the highest rated still left. Johnny Daniel has a center, but that's just not... It's not what we're looking for. I mean, the problem is, right, like, I'm going to see, like, oh, shit, he has ridiculous potential. And eh, not really. Roger Austin we're not going to take. So Bill Bell is someone who we kind of expected to be here. He's 23 years old. 72. No, thank you. Like, you are just not going to get better. We have 100% accuracy on him, too, so there shouldn't be a major jump. Yeah, so Bill's not an option. We have Rudy Warner, who's a 73 at 21 years old. What's the potential looking like, though? 
75? Ugh. I'd still rather take him than Bill Bell, just because he's two years younger and two overall points better. Uh, Richie Davidson is a 73, 20 years old. 82 potential, so I think Davidson's the new favorite. He's a year younger than Warner. Same overall and a higher potential. Both of them listed as a sharpshooter. I mean, obviously, Bell and Warner have uh, more badges currently, but I'm not too concerned. So, yeah, right now, Davidson's definitely the favorite. Uh, Arif Basturk, surprisingly, not uh, not a stash player. Uh, Mitch Patrick, I mean, unless the potential's crazy. Yeah, it's an 83. Whoa, what the hell was a 99 down there? That had to have been, like, durability or something, right? Stamina, yeah. Crazy reaction time. I still think Davidson's the better way to go. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Malcolm Daniels. God, that's a low overall. 82 potential. It's still worth double-checking here. Gustavo Pena, the Argentinian. 74 potential. I think we have our guy. I think we have our guy. Karan Daly. 72. Yeah, we have our guy. We have to. So, Richie Davidson. Richie Davidson. Out of Cal, 73 overall, shooting guard, point guard, exactly what we need. He might not be the best player available, but I'm feeling pretty good about that acquisition. Richie, welcome aboard. I want to see what they say about him. Many in the media that will see this as a surprise pick. I, for one, am sold not only on Davidson's upside, but what he can bring to the table. All right. I don't view it as a surprise. I mean, it was a little bit off the board, I suppose, so I can see why that uh, text prompt would come up. Question is, who else can we get? Will it be wise to take a forward in this position? So let me uh, let me see. No crazy overalls. Nothing too crazy for age. So Jackie Nash, only 70% scouted. 21 years old, 6'6", guard or forward. I don't really know if I want to trust that, though. You know, Floyd Snow, Sean Childress. We didn't get a ton of info on Wenley Tam. 22 years old, though. I mean, right now, Jackie Nash is the favorite. Although, then you do get someone like Brad Strawberry, who, again, I don't have the most info on, but he is 19 years old, fresh out of high school. Could end up being a G League player next year while someone like McKinney moves up to the bench. So right now, I'm thinking it's either between Nash, who does have the height to play forward, showing up as a C-minus overall, or Strawberry, who was also a C-minus overall. The problem is Strawberry's younger. Strawberry's two years younger, which could be extremely helpful. Do we have anybody with 100% scouting and accuracy at this point? We don't. So it, it pretty much comes down to Nash or Strawberry. Athletic shooting guard for Jackie. Or we go for Strawberry, who technically has a higher offensive rating. I think we got to go for Brad Strawberry. Out of high school, power forward, small forward. So, technically, technically we'd be okay. I'd probably move him to forward full-time. Small forward, that is. Probably move him over full-time. Nash, though, again, that's kind of exactly what we need as a, out of a depth player. It's a little bit tough, though. We know he's not that great. The potential for Nash right now, that's showing up as a B. What about for Strawberry? B minus. Oh, man. My heart says take the younger player in Strawberry, but Nash is pretty much exactly what we need. Stamina, speed, and three-point shot. Vertical, steel, and stamina. Hmm. That is a tough one. It's one of the two. We've made a pretty bad mistake before. I'm going to take I'm going to take Jackie Nash, I think. He's exactly what I need as opposed to Strawberry who might not be what I need. Although I'm going to guess it's 6-8. I mean, he'd be he would be pretty good, especially with that three-point shooting of moving out and taking a shot. Doesn't have much three-point shooting ability. Really? Yeah, it says three-point. Jackie Nash. We're taking Davidson and we are taking Jackie Nash. Out of San Diego State, with this next pick, we get help up top like we needed. Nash was projected to go much higher than this. Sonics have to be pleased. Hey, I'll take it. I will take it. Feeling pretty good, even if those are just generic prompts. 
Meeks ended up going number one, of course. Let's see the full report on Davidson. He's a 72, which isn't too bad. That's pretty good, actually. Kind of what I was hoping for. What is his true potential, though? 83, not bad. Not bad. That's a decent enough player. Potential sixth man of the year worthy, maybe. Probably not, but for us, kind of. So I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. And ooh, Jackie Nash was awful. Just awful. So definitely, uh, definitely going to be between him and Kato for who goes to the G League next year if both of them don't. But at the very least, Davidson was exactly what I needed. And the question is whether or not there was actually anybody half decent that we could have ended up with. Strawberry was a 64. What is his potential, though? We're not going to be able to see. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Feeling yeah, pretty good about it. Of course, there have been the complaints of the second round being a bit hit or miss, and I understand that. I'm not too worried about it, though. Uh, we are going to sign both of them. And team and player options. Bo Hannon is going nowhere. McKinney is also going nowhere. Both of you are staying. Because why would you not be? I need you both. Qualifying offers. So, Fowler, Gomez, and Levens. Can all go. Cameron Black will obviously try to keep. Wesley will try to keep as well. Cato, McDaniels, try to keep those four. Everybody else can go. And we'll double check what we're dealing with here. Just to make sure we're not at risk of losing anybody. AC Galloway, who in a different life we could have had on the team, is available. Although granted as an RFA. So Black, McDaniels, and Wesley, we know we've sent qualifying offers to. So we're looking good on that front. Although Wesley right now is not a systems match whatsoever so we should be good now there were four players right but i'm not they were all rfas so i'm not at risk of losing anybody i don't believe so of course arnold is there bohannon is there davidson and nash you have sparks no kato he was the other one that went to the free agent list mckinney black and mcdaniels were all on the free agent list or uh, black and mcdaniels were dario and marsh Okay, so we should be good. I don't think I'm at risk of losing anybody. I hope not. I always get kind of kind of uh, worried, we'll say. So we are going to hold firm there with Black, McDaniels, Cato, and Wesley. We're going to renounce rights for Levens, Fowler, and Gomez. Just kind of waiting for those guys to end up with offers. Although I think I might just send in my own offers just to try and make sure that we are good to go. So Cameron Black... My God, he wants to get paid. Let's uh, let's do it. Money-wise, I'm starting to get a little bit concerned. McDaniel's, we'll send an offer too, and Wesley as well. So the only other, there were some other ones though, right? Like Cato, Cato was there, which is very concerning. Damn it! Let me go to guards here. I think I just it was only Cato, right? Who isn't the greatest, but still. I want to make sure we don't lose. He's, he's up to a 68. He might be... So, that's right, damn it. Uh, so Black accepted a deal from the Timberwolves. That is not going to happen. We are absolutely going to match that. And we'll sign McDaniels and Wesley. Beautiful. Kato, we are not renouncing rights. That's going to be a cap hold. We will renounce rights, though, with those three. So it is looking pretty good. It just said Black decided to sign with the Timberwolves. I matched it, though. Right? I matched that. Wait, is he allowed to match but then still leave? He was an RFA. I hit match, didn't I? If we just lost Cameron Black, that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be upsetting. We lost him though, didn't we? Ah. Uh... I'm so confused. I matched it though. Are we good or not? I, I don't know. I know we're still in the moratorium phase, but... Start. Black. Match. Okay, so he's not going anywhere. Wesley, match. McDaniels, match. For the love of God. I think I'm okay. I'm not renouncing rights there. Jesus Christ. They, they could set this up to be a little bit better. <laughs> Kato's still in a cap hold. Okay. So I think... We're good. I fucking hope that we're good. Right? Go back over here. Thank Christ. Oh, God. Okay, we're still fine. 
we're still fine. Aside from this roster, so who are we missing right now? We have Arnold and Bohannon. We have Davidson and Nash, so no Kato or Sparks. There is Sparks. We have Black, McDaniels, and McKinney. Galab Marsh. I'm just missing Kato. Aside from that, we're good. Thank God. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm still new enough to this so that when something like that happens, I do get concerned. Now, I did send Kato a deal, did I not? Oh, that's right. I couldn't. So, there we go. Let's see, let me see if I can bring back Kato. And we should be good to go. Cap hold. Go forward today. Kato sign. There we go. So, as far as the roster is concerned, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. We're golden. We don't even have to sign anybody to help fill out the roster. So let's see what we can do. I'm gonna get a set up for the next season, I think. So to player progression we go. Oh my God, that was nerve wracking and horrifying and terrifying, but thank God it worked out. My God, my God Arnold Bohannon and Arikas. It's, it's attractive. Oh, Bohannon, Jesus. Oh boy, the big three. Good Lord. Good lord, Irvin Bohannon. I am excited. <laughs> Very excited. To training camps we go. Of course, we'll focus on yield untapped potential. And we'll see who could use just a little bit of a boost to try and help things work out for us. Like, I knew, I knew Cameron Black was an RFA, but it was scary enough that I thought there was a legitimate chance of us losing him. By the way, Kato, up to a 70. He is absolutely going to be useful to us this season, which is pretty nice. So training camp-wise, let's see what we're dealing with here, right? So, Arnold. Let's see. Your current potential, I just remembered. I cannot see it from here. Uh, it is tendency view, not tendency view. Player list, not that. Damn it, I forget. It's under the whole aggregate thing, but I don't think I can see. No, I can, yeah, there we go. I can see it from right here. So A plus for Bohannon, an A for Dorikas, an A for Arnold, black at an A minus. Okay, so Arnold going up to an A plus would be amazing. He is a 90, though. You have Bohannon at an A plus, Davidson at a B plus, Cato at a B minus. And then Nash will spend one season in the G League. So Kato and Davidson are going to be bench players for us. Davidson's going to have a really good chance here to be successful. Uh, Black, A minus, A minus. Sparks is kind of a lost cause. And then McKinney is technically a 72. He's also at a B minus. If AJ Marsh, who we picked up not all that long ago, A plus potential for him. He's going to be an absolute monster. By the time he's ready to take over for Dario, it's going to be great. Dorikas at an A, Hopkins at a B. I am actually really torn here, right? Because with Bohannon, he's set. Dorikas could technically go up to an A+, I would hope. Arnold could go up to an A+. But what's more beneficial, getting the A's to an A+, or say an A- minus like Cameron Black to an A? That's the real question. We could just go with those top three, because Dario is 28. I don't know how, how important it's going to be getting you know a 28-year-old to an A-. minus. Hopkins is already 26. Getting him to a B-plus isn't going to be that beneficial. Getting McDaniels to an A would be pretty nice, admittedly. Marsh is already an A-plus. Sparks is 30. Getting Davidson to an A- minus could be nice. Wesley's 25. I mean, he's a depth player through and through. Getting Kato up to a B could be quite helpful. Same with McKinney. So I'm just trying to decide if I want the you know the top players on the team to have a chance to get even better, or if I want to focus on the bench. It's kind of a tough call. But getting Dorikas, Arnold, and Black all up by one could be helpful. You know, I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that's what I'm going to do. Dorikas, Arnold, and Black are going to be the three that we focus on. Hopefully getting them all up to the next level. So Dorikas indeed goes up to an A+. Plus. As if he wasn't a big enough beast to begin with. Arnold indeed goes up to an A+. Plus, as if he wasn't a big enough beast to begin with. Cameron Black goes up to an A. He was already a monster of a defender. And he just got even better. So this team, heading into this season, I'm excited to see what we're dealing with. I want to get a look at the lineup. The 2025 
2026 season. Of course, we're going to take a look here overall-wise as well. So quick edit, Bohannon is technically an 89 there, a 91 there, and an 88 there. So we'll still have him as shooting guard, point guard. That's fine. Dorikas. He's even better as a power forward. However, my God, he could even be a somewhat useful uh, small forward. Two-way star, two-way superstar, two-way superstar. I might have him listed as a power forward, but again, that takes... So he's going to be a beast regardless. I think he'll still be a center power forward. We need him to be a center just because Dario doesn't have the height, but we want Dario playing rather than uh, Hopkins. So, yeah, we'll leave him there. Arnold again, same thing. I mean, the problem is he's a better point guard, just barely, than Bohannon. Makes sense to leave him there and have Bohannon be a shooting guard still. So that, that works. The top three, I think, will remain the same. They're all pretty well set up. Cameron Black, right now, still absolutely a forward. Shooting guard is the backup. Dario, yeah, he's 6'8". I mean, unless we want him, you know, Ben Wallace style. But I, th I still think power forward. And then center or, sh or small forward. I don't think I need his backup spot as, uh, as center anymore because we do have Hopkins. So I think I'm going to change uh, the secondary position to small forward. I think that's... I think that's better suited for him. Let's go back into quick edits. Again, Bohannon's good, Dorikas is good, Arnold's good, Black there, Dario is set. And then Hopkins, of course, at seven foot would also be center. He's technically a better power forward than that. So like I said, it's either we don't run Dario at all and have him be our sixth man and have Hopkins and Dorikas with Hopkins at center and Dorikas at power forward, or we go with Dorikas and Dario. It makes sense. So Hopkins, will still be, to be honest, I might even have him listed as a powerful, eh, I don't really think it matters. I mean, he's still the obvious choice there to replace either one of the two, right? But technically, he's a higher rating there. It, it's pretty much irrelevant, I would say. I'm going to change him over to a power forward, though, although Marsh is also a power forward. You know what? That's a bad idea. Hopkins, back to center. Uh, McDaniels. It's actually a tough one. So McDaniels... That's eh, fairly straightforward, though. Still being a forward with a shooting guard as the secondary option. Uh, AJ Marsh is 6'9". So, I mean, power forward first for sure. And it's just whether or not I wanted him to be a forward as well. Technically, he's just as good of a center. I think I'm going to leave him there. Sparks is good where he is. Forward and guard. Davidson is good where he is. Although technically shooting guard and forward would be the better way to go in terms of overalls. Not by much, but I am going to make that change. I'm going to double check this, of course, seeing how everyone's looking. But uh, there we go. We'll make that slight change for our first round pick. Byron Wesley Kind of the same thing, though, right? Same setup, either center or power forward. It's just the argument of whether or not he should be a power forward first. Technically, he's listed as an elite defender under power forward. It's just whether or not it's it's even necessary, I suppose. Jackie Nash. Definitely going to be shooting guard and forward. Perimeter defender, wing defender. I mean, obviously defense first. McKinney is probably better suited. He'd be a somewhat smaller power forward. But, 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 I think we go forward and uh, power forward for him as well. Just straight up with that setup. So, I don't, I don't know. I wanted to give you guys a look, though. Like, normally this type of stuff that you could cut out, and normally I do, I leave the option for people, hey, if you want to see the info on what these guys look like as far as the different positions, you have the ability to do so. Of course, you can skip if you want to. Uh, Kato as a shooting guard and forward is still a good idea. And then Wesley, I think I'm going to make him a power forward for the hell of it. Go back, change the secondary position to center. And I want to see what this roster is looking like. So point guard wise, it's still going to be Arnold and Bohannon. 
It's just a matter of, I guess, the minutes. So right now, point guard, the only one listed there is uh, Arnold. Also a shooting guard. Then you have Bohannon. So yeah, it's pretty much going to be Arnold and Bohannon the full way right now, the way it's set up. You got a lot of secondary guys who are pretty good at forwards, so I definitely have to make that change. Like, there's no, there's no real option here. So Bohannon having a secondary uh, position of a point guard still makes sense. Davidson, Cato. Cato's a little bit shorter. I know he's only a 67, though. I want to make him a little bit more useful. 70 overall there for Davidson. Uh, it's kind of a tough call. I guess I'd rather have it be Davidson, you know, in terms of the overall, who gets a little bit more of an opportunity to play point guard a little bit more frequently. So we'll still make it his secondary position, which, again, as far as having players set up, I guess it really doesn't matter what their higher overall is because it depends on where they're playing. But that way, I mean, three point guard wise, it's either going to be Arnold and Bohannon and Davidson. Could change Cato and Nash over, but again, I think for this season, Nash is going G League. I don't think we're going to need him because that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, ooh, twelve, thirteen. We definitely need to shorten the bench anyway. I mean, technically, we could send down. Am I only allowed? I'm only allowed to send down two, right? Actually, damn, McKinney can't even go down. Can Cato? No. So we're going to have some players who are certainly just going to be sitting around doing absolutely nothing. But I think we have Dorikas and Hopkins at center. Power forward's mainly going to be Dario and Marsh. Wesley isn't going to see that much playing time. He'll be a depth option. Uh, we're going to have Black, McDaniels, and then probably McKinney. Sparks is going to be probably pretty far down. A lot of different ways we could set that up. But if I were to set up the team right now, again, there's still the debate over the current uh, system that we're using on this team. But let's say I auto-assign that. What are we dealing with? So Kato's not going to be playing. Davidson technically wouldn't be playing, which is not what I would want at all. Like I said, I think Wesley would be out. Sparks would be out. I'm actually going to... Uh, let's just have that. Let's drop that down to 9. Auto-reassign just to see what it looks like. So I think technically... We would take Sparks out, give those minutes to Davidson to have him be backup point guard ready. You have Hopkins as our backup center, Marsh as our backup power forward and a guard. McDaniels would also be guard worthy and uh, shooting guard worthy and forward worthy. And then Davidson's backup uh, point guard. I have to sneeze. That was painful. Anyway, we have options, which I think is the point. We have the best version of this team that we have ever had. That starting lineup is looking pretty damn good, but I wanted to have you have the ability to give you know proper input on what, what you think as far as starting position, secondary position, and what you think the rotation should look like to start this year. Again, we still have the option of changing up the system. As far as the proficiency right now, though, it's at four star, which is pretty damn good. Balance is at three and a half. Pace and space at three and a half. Perimeter centric is also at four, and that gets Dorikas into a much better spot. Doesn't affect or it doesn't help Cameron Black all that much, but again, he's not an offensive force, not at all. So this might be more beneficial to go perimeter centric, just because we're not really worried about Cameron Black. And then seven seconds, of course, kind of affects Dorikas a little bit, but he's still a monster. So let me know what you think. A lot of things we could change, but we are absolutely on pace to have our best season yet, and I don't know if that's accurate or not, but we're listed as number one on the power rankings. And I, I, yeah, I don't know if that's accurate or not, but if it is, I'm feeling pretty, pretty damn good about what this next season could bring. From nine wins to 19 wins to 41 wins. What is this season going to look like for the Seattle Sonics? I'm excited to find out.